Look at that hat. Look at that hat. That's a hat. Just occurred to me. I'm a man of many hats. Oh, cat and hat. How you doing? Oh, oh, yeah. Um, there's gotta be another hat around here. Oh, 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 yeah. That's like a glove. Look at that. Many hat. Oh. Not a one there I thought I could put on, but no, it's best to keep things in order. Siskov Pazunka. It's Polish for everything is in order. Siskov Pazunka. And I know I should have talked about this hat before. But look at this. I can't wear this hat all the time. I, you gotta, oh, look. You can see my house from there. <sighs> yeah, you can't wear this hat when it's too warm. Right now is even too warm to be wearing it. It's, it's, it's like 30 degrees. This hat doesn't come out until it's like, ugh. Zero to twenties. Oh. There. Yeah. This hat, I have walked like the four and a half miles to work when I was working with a with a mentally handicapped and I'd I'd walk four and a half miles, get to go by the airport and everything else. Oh today I was driving ah listen <laughs> music's fucking blaring I'm going ah everybody's so courteous. Yeah and this plane as I was going by the airport just goes this sleek private jet just comes blowing right in front of my window. And I say, yeah, this is a good day. I love to fly under a plane and look up through the sunroof as it goes over me. But to have it coming on, ah, it's just like there's so much manifest aggression. It's, uh, that's what we are. And, but I was walking by the airport in 40 below wind chill temperatures. And when you walk by the airport in Gaylord, Michigan, it's all open field because it's an airport. You need to, so you've got open fields. There are no trees blocking this 40 below wind chill. And I, and I'm walking and I said, oh, Oh. Oh. You walk by that. You got it on because it's 40 below wind chill. Oh. It's all tied up just like that. Bang. And you can just feel the winds going whoosh, howling through. And you're going to come from the land of the ice and snow where the midnight sun and ash winds blow. Ah! And you can just feel that this 40 below just touching your head. And you're wearing your motorcycle gloves. Oh, I didn't even know those were sitting there. How perfect. And you're walking through there and, you know, I've only been down to 16 degrees in a motorcycle. That's when you're sitting there at the stoplight and going, oh, my fucker, 
I didn't mean to be riding this today, but my car broke down and the roads are dry. Then you're sitting there and you don't even want to look at the guy sitting next to you at the light because you know he's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're going, oh, go fuck yourself. And that's, oh, uh, and yeah, you can just feel siete. Siete. You can just feel the wind touching your head, your scalp, like fingers going, come on, come on. And, but it doesn't hurt. This is a hat. This is a hat. Oh, oh siete. This is a hat that I got when I did a semester abroad in Bath, England, and it came time for spring break, and I bought a one-way ticket to Poland. I was planning on going to see the, the, the homeland, you know, the motherland, and I bought a one-way ticket because I, yeah, and these two guys, everybody had their plans for spring break at Siete. And they came up to me out of nowhere one day and they said, we heard you're going to Poland. I said, yeah. They said, can we come with you? I said, I don't care. I said, uh, I got a one-way ticket. I don't know how I'm getting back. And they said, okay. And they went rolling in Poland with me. And then we went to, uh, ah, siete, one's out. I said I got a one-way ticket. I was planning on going because the first time I was in Europe, I ended up with somebody else and we didn't end up going to Poland. And uh, that was part of the plan. I was going to Poland, going to see the people, the relatives. Some people, yeah, in my family, they make a big deal out of that. And I was there, so I was like, well, I might as well, but it never happened. And then, uh, so the next time I said, I'm back, I, uh, I'm going to Poland to see the people, going to the motherland. And I said, I don't know how I'm getting back there. Like, okay. And so along the way, I said, screw the people, the relatives. Warsaw was too much fun. And it was a full moon coming. So I uh, thought, what a good time it would be to be in Transylvania. I'm telling the story now I've already told. What I realized, I might have only told it once. When I was on the radio, I would never tell a story again. That's why after about three or four years, I was like, I got to get out of here. I'm running out of stories. But uh, I wouldn't tell a story from one week to the next. I didn't like to share stories more than once. I always felt like, well, if you weren't last, listening last week, where the hell were you? But there is a serious thing, you like traffic. If you see somebody driving like a maniac, he might have a reason to be. So where the hell were you? Maybe they just didn't even know you were there. And so uh, I'm telling the story again. And so out of Warsaw after a three day drunk, when I didn't go to the station to buy the tickets to get to Transylvania, which took us through the Ukraine. Ukraine no week. I wasn't there to ask about a visa. I told them to ask about a visa, but the old, you know, communist black woman, elder, uh, middle-aged woman at that time who is still remembering the communist black in her little uniform, she, uh, she told them, need no visa. And so they said, we don't need one. I said, okay. 
as it turns out, you need a visa if you're an American. If you're a Polish resident, no problem. And so we bought tickets in cash. I gave them the money. And uh, we were going through the Ukraine to get to Transylvania to, to go see Tepes, Vlad Tepes's Dracula's castle under a full moon. We pull up to the border of Poland and the Ukraine. Train stops, Polish border authorities come through, check our passports, passport, passport, check your passports, and they say, okay, get the fuck out of here. We get over the border, there you are in no man's land. It's like traveling from Hong Kong to fucking Guangzhou, Shenzhen. Shenzhen. Yeah. Where you feel like you're in no man's land for a little bit. You're in between borders and you're just looking at the river going, if they don't let me in, they're not going to let me. But like the last time I tried to get into Canada, they said, no. And I said, well, are they going to let me in? They have to. You are a citizen. Uh, and then it was, they were nicer, the Canadians kicking me out than the Americans were letting me back in. I was like, oh boy, here we go. But uh, so it's always a weird place in that no man land. There's always a bridge. There's always a river. There's always a train. And there's some place where you're just sitting there going, I think I'm fucked. It's easy to disappear. And this is where I learned it. It was them, you know, there were no credit card transactions, nothing. Just cash on the table, a ticket in hand. And we got to the border going into the Ukraine after we were let out of Poland. And they're coming through with the train going, passports, passport, passport. Oh, papers. And you hold it up and they look. And they're looking and they're looking and they're looking. And they go, ah! And these guys come on with fucking firearms. They're pointing at us. -la 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 -la. And these two guys that were just wanting to go for a trip with me that didn't like the snow when we got out in Warsaw, came out of the airport, they said, and the guys with the guns on the side of the road, some machine guns, every corner, everybody's in, you know, uniform. And these guys are like, what did you get in, get us into? And I said, you asked to come. This is how I travel. And so then we're going into the Ukraine and Ah, and they're like, ah, and I said, ah, I think they want us to get off the train. And they're like, oh. so we grabbed our bags and we got off the train and the doors closed. I went, shoot, 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 took off. And there's a full moon in the sky, just beautiful. At this little outpost at the border between Poland and the Ukraine. And I was like, this is fantastic. You couldn't even see a star in the sky. All it was was the moon. There was no light in that dead man zone. And they, ah! And they put us in the back of a damn, a military vehicle, like a, a deuce and a half, you know, kind of a military truck with a canvas over the back, two and a half ton type of thing, but smaller that one was. And we're sitting there and it's like, this is kind of serious. And this is why I hate, ah, I despise the lion pricks that said they went fucking hiking when they get caught up and put in custody and get their heads cut off in Iran, in Iraq or wherever the hell they are. I was just hiking 
it, it, because they say that shit all the time. Really, I was just, I was on spring break. And they're like, well, yeah, yeah. And nobody spoke English. And we're sitting in the back of this deuce and a half, this, this military vehicle, and there's a guy with a gun, a, a rifle, a weapon. And he's there, and he's looking at us. And I'd been learning from my little book. And I said to him in Polish, I said, Shemuvi Penny Popolska, Shemuvi Penny. I asked him if he spoke English in, in Polish, I asked him if he spoke English. I said, Shemuvi Pampongielsku, which means, do you speak English? And here's this Ukrainian guy at the border, and he looks at me and he says, No! And he turns his head. Remind me of the time my brother didn't want to see me when I was brought home from the hospital as an infant, newborn. No! And he just turned his head. I said, That was pretty good English. And so what they did, it turns out we needed a visa to get into a get into the Ukraine as American citizens. And they just let us sit in the back of that truck for a while, next train rolled up, they put us on it and sent us into Lvov. Lviv, Lvov, Ukraine, no leak. It's, it's a border, close to the border town in the Ukraine, which used to be part of Poland, Ukraine. That's why you get the Kieviches, the, the, the Viches versus the Skis. It was a different area, but it was all part of the same place. And then they took it away, the Russians did, cut it in half. Joseph Conrad was a Ukrainian Polak. And uh, I don't know why my cigarettes keep going out. I must be talking too much. And so they put us on this damn train and sent us into town. And so we get off at this great, beautiful, what would, was a beautiful, beautiful train station, but it's so covered in smoke and soot from the people that are living in there and their fires burning constantly and they're trying to sell you shit. And you're just like, I'm just trying to get the fuck out of here. And, uh, you go upstairs and you see the board and it's all in Cyrillic in Russian script and you don't read it. But given time, you start figuring out it's all just like Greek. And if you've been around the college long enough, you know these jerk offs with other Greek letters, you can make sense of it. It, it all works out. Nothing against you at all. Thank you very much. You helped. But you go and you're looking at this board and you're three guys and the one guy said he was a, a brown belt and karate that had never been in a fight and the other guy's just a ah, going to school to be a teacher so he can rape junior high school girls as far as I could tell. And you're standing there and you get these two brutes coming in there standing right, be, right behind you. Six feet, no. You don't even get six inches, they're right on you. And we're sitting there trying to read this board. And I looked at them and I looked at these two guys and I said, we should go back downstairs. And so we went back down there and we went out into the, into the world. There were, there, we didn't know how the hell to get out of where we were, we were just there. And so we went and we got a hotel. None of us had any money. There was checks supposed to be coming in that were failing because the government doesn't work properly. And uh, then we're left in, in the Ukraine. And so we went to a, we went to a hotel. Thought I had money on a card. Wasn't enough. We had a really nice room. They put us in a really nice room when, when they saw my credit card. And the guy that took us up there, he says, uh, 
He says, you want girls? And I was like, oh, no. I knew I didn't have money for that. It was not even that. It's just we didn't want girls. We were trying to get through to Transylvania. And we're in trouble. And then in the middle of the night, they came in and knocked on the door and said that our credit cards didn't pass through. And so they moved us to a smaller room, which wasn't so beautiful. Next day, we went out in the world, used my credit card, because they just had the shink, chink, shink, chink thing that you got for a credit card. It was the same way you used to be able to get across the country without credit on your card. When gas stations had all those things. And, uh... We'd eat at the same place every day. And then that night, you know, we ate the, like a five-star restaurant. They'd bring cigarettes to you at the end of the meal with a cup of coffee. They'd bring cigarettes in a case. And he said, oh, thank you. I didn't smoke at the time, but I would take one with my coffee at the end of the meal. It was a very high-class place, empty, except for the Americans. They thought they could trust us. Empty. And then you go and you try and get a room in that place again that night and you're talking on the phone to your credit card place saying, hey, look, you're always offering me a higher amount of money that I can get. And now you're telling me I can't, you offer it and you put it on me and you let me use it. You don't want to give me money. You don't want to give me money. I get, I can find a way to spend it. But now you won't add on to my amount of money I can get. And they're like, no, we cannot do that. Uh, you sons of bitches. So these people, they, after half hour, 45 minutes, you're in Ukraine. It's like being in the Stone Age is what it was. And then they are nice. So they take you and they put you in their little quarters where, where they sleep and they let you sleep in the closet. And then you wake up in the middle of the night and it's hotter now and you're like, ah, ah, uh, I'm dry. You haven't even been drinking because you got no money. Really not like drinking. There's no party going on. And you go and you walk around in the dark and you find the sink and you go, ah, and you turn it on <coughs> and you start drinking because you're just so dry. You're in the Ukraine and you're drinking this and it's like, ah, 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 and you can't get the taste out of your mouth. I'm radioactive. It's like you're drinking Chernobyl and then they kick you out in the morning it was nice of them to let you stay. And then you go back to that five-star restaurant and you sit there and wait for them to wake up in the morning. And, and they see you and they open the doors and welcome you in and you use your card. Shink, shink. And then that night, they won't even let you stay in the hotel anymore because you're trying to get out of the country but they won't let you out. There's so much I'm not even gonna talk about, like the guy with the gold teeth that we tried to get out and he's standing there and he's like, ah, little guy looking up, he's about this tall and he's looking up into my eyes and he's going, ah. And takes your passport and they hold you. We tried to get out a couple times over those days and it was the same guy there, he recognized us and he was so happy to kick us back in. They see in America, if they don't want you, they kick your ass out. There, it was like they didn't want to kick our asses out. It was like they needed to replenish the bloodline, make it better, make it fresh, you know.
there's a lot of radiation flying through the air over there. Nothing that a good half hillbilly, half pole lot couldn't help. So they, they wouldn't let us go. And this guy, uh, and they made us sit in the, in the border there and, and trying to take our passports. And I'm saying, no, you do not get this. And so these other two guys, my friends, they're like, ah, these two guys. One guy's my friend, the other guy, I don't trust him at all. You know the one I'm talking about. I said, you don't give them to them. You let that out of your hands, you're screwed. You'll never see it again and you'll be in a ditch. And so we never gave up our, and then they'd send us back in. And so there's this next night that we slept in the park. I had a, a sleeping bag that I took with me. Uh, I was warm. We slept in the park in the snow, just like it is out there. And woke up in mud because of the heat. We were all huddled together for warmth. Never in my life have I ever huddled together for warmth with another man. Uh, with anybody, actually. I, I usually, it's warm enough. But, uh... wake up in the middle of the night in the mud where you cooked through to the mud, through the ice and the snow, and you're in the park, and you see these guys, these guys walking, old men walking in a suit with young, big, strong men behind them in suits, and you realize this is a goddamn Russian mafia and we're sleeping in their park. They had a coffee tent. They have coffee tents in the park. So people could go in in the night, you know, I don't know what the hell is going on. But um, seeing the whole thing, then wake up in the morning and you're at the five-star restaurant again with your card that doesn't have any money in it. And you see them go, look through, they must be sleeping in there. Look through the blinds and they see and they're like, and we're all sitting there and they let you in. We got a lot of good feeding while we were broke and homeless. We did. And then finally went to see the, how to get a visa, went to the visa office and there was a lot of screaming, you spy, you spy. I think that means spy. Their English wasn't so good. And uh, we're sitting there, oh, what the hell is going on here? Because I'd gotten some money. My army check finally came through. And so I had money to buy our way out of there and I put it in my sock. I had my mother wire it to me and I, I had a grand in my sock. I'm like, I went to the bathroom. I said, I'll be back. And they're like, oh, and I said, I'll be back. And they didn't follow me and I went in there. I said, they didn't know I had the money. And um, once they got everything together with what was going on there, we showed our face to the visa office. They put us in a car with this young translator that didn't speak much English. And they we drove through town like, like, like traffic is today. <sighs> We drove through the town and we just go, oh, there's a statue, and trying to look at things and enjoy the scenery. And um, they took us to the minister of the border patrol office there. And the minister of the border patrol came in. We were in a cinder block building uh, room, sitting there for a good while, going, well, it's gonna be hard to get out of here. And I'd been holding off calling the embassy because I didn't want to go back to the U.S. I was just on spring break. I still had time left in England, Bath. And um, they just had us in there. And this guy that wanted to rape 
um, junior high school girls. That's why he was becoming a teacher, as far as I could tell, for junior high. Um, there's more to it than that, you, you gotta understand. He started screaming, ah, that's it. We're calling the embassy. We're calling the embassy. And the whole time, this is not going good for us. We're just sitting there and this guy is trying to translate. And these people are just glaring at us the whole time. And um, this guy starts yelling, we're calling the embassy. And they just went. And I got up and it was time. I said, you shut the fuck up. I am not going back to America. And I started railing on him. And they watched that interaction between the two of us without really, they didn't know what the hell we were talking about, but they watched that. And within 15 minutes, they let us go. I got us out. I could have been one of these people on the news getting his head cut off because he was hiking and accidentally walked into Iran. I said, no, you know, I'm in a file somewhere. They changed the whole way they, they gave the study over C's program thing, speech orientation when we got back and they heard our story because the, somebody went overseas a couple of years later that I met and I saw, I went there and, and I told them that. And they said, that was you? There's a lot of that that goes on. That was you from strangers. They said, they changed the whole system. They, they tell the story about you. And said, it's not my fault. I was just drunk. But then they, when they let us out, they put us up in a really nice hotel room again. And they had guys like, like secret service dudes that were following us around everywhere we went. They followed us. They followed, they were like not even trying to hide the fact that they were following us. They followed us and we had money. So went to the bar, got shots. The Oscars were on TV. And um, these two guys, I, I bought enough. And I said, yeah, I bought them shots. And the one guy says, mm. I said, oh, why not? And he says, uh. and he showed his pistol there. And I said, ah, ha, ha, drank his. You know, it's very cool. But at the same time, we'd gone to a really nice restaurant, being that we had money, and um, went by a hat shop, and I, ah, uh, I got this hat, and it does, it fits like a glove. It was perfectly, I looked at the sizes and picked mine out from knowing what my military size was. And I said, oh, that's a good hat. And it's got a little tag that has Ukrainian writing in it. The Cyrillic, Russian, when it was made. 97 it was made. And that was spring break, um, 97. It had just been made. And uh, so what a good hat. And so you saw Sieti earlier. I know this is rabbit. Cats are much like rabbits. So what I know is that when, when Siete dies, he's gonna make a great hat. <laughs>